Hello, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. It's a free website for all things Adobe Creative Cloud. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at a new addition to the Creative Cloud, that is Adobe Dimension. Now, this allows us to make 3D mock-ups of products or scenes in a jiffy. So let's jump in and see how it's done. Now, straight off the bat, you can see that I'm actually in Photoshop and I've got an image here ready to go. This is coming to me from Adobe Stock. Now, it's quite a large image when I download it, and you can see it's currently at 3,663 pixels in width. Now, that's going to be a little bit too big for what I want. All I want to do is just a quick little mock-up, and remember, I'm going to have to render 3D images at the end. So I want to keep it reasonably small, especially for a demonstration like this. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller. I'm going to go to image size, and I'm going to bring that down maybe to somewhere around the 50% mark, and that brings us to 1,832. I'm going to click OK. If I press Control or Command 0, that's going to fit that on screen. And in fact, Control or Command 1 will show it 100%, and I can see that that's a reasonable size. That's going to work well for me. OK, I'm going to go to File and Export, and then I'm going to go to Quick Export as a JPEG, and I'm going to pop that somewhere where I know I'm going to remember where it is. I'm going to make a new folder for a mock-up. There we go. And I'm going to pop that in there. OK, that's all I need to do in Photoshop right now. But I am going to return to Photoshop a little bit later for another little feature that's part of Adobe Dimension. OK, let's go over to Dimension. Like I say, that comes as part of the Creative Cloud now. So we can open that up from our Creative Cloud. We can download it and open it up. If you've been with me before and seen Adobe Felix or Project Felix, then this may ring some bells. There are some more additions to it and it's been enhanced somewhat. So it's always worth going and getting Dimension now rather than sticking with Project Felix. That was a beta product. OK, I'm going to create a new project. Now, once it opens, you can see that we've got several things going on here. We can see that we've got a nice working space in the middle. That's where our scene's going to be built. Then over the left hand side, we've got our assets and our toolbar. And then over the right hand side, we've got all the buttons and the sliders that we're going to need to build the scene. First things first, let's get our background in. So let's go to File and Import and Images Background. And then we can go to that file that I just made up, there's our mock up, and bring that in. Now Dimensions is going to have a look at this image and it's going to see if it can match anything up. And indeed, in this case, it has all three elements. So you can see that it's created an environment light. Now that means that it's going to make the light source the same as the image itself. If you're familiar with 3D in Photoshop, then what this has done is done an IBL, an image-based lighting. And we'll see more of that in just a little while. It's going to match the sunlight, more of that in just a little while, but it's going to try and match where the sun's coming in. We can say there's no sun in this if we wanted to, but for now I'm going to keep it. It thinks there's a sun in this image, and actually that's going to work well. Then finally, match the camera perspective. So you can see that there's a plane in there now, and what it's going to do is it's going to say, OK, let's match that plane, that 3D plane, into the image itself. So I'm going to click OK, and sure enough, off it goes, does what it needs to do, and then gives us our plane there. OK, so anything we put onto our ground plane will be in the 3D space. It's worked out where the horizon is. We can check that and move it if we want to, just coming over to this tool over here. And you can see we can just grab it and move it around. In this case, it's done a very good job of finding the horizon and uh, finding where the uh, perspective is going. All right, I'm going to go back up to the top. Now, what I want to do here is add in a 3D shape. So we can see up here, we've got various different icons. And this second one along, that's for models or shapes. So we want to add a model. In fact, there's a really nice one in here of a coffee cup. So there's a coffee cup there. I can just click and drag that. And you'll notice that we get this greeny bluey square. And that's telling me where in the 3D scene is going to be. So I'm just going to drop it down. And there it goes, loads it in. You can see it's added the shadow and all the shading in for me. And that's come from that image-based lighting that was worked out at the very beginning. Now, it's a little bit too big, and it's obviously in the wrong place. But I can move it about in 3D space using my handles here. Really easy to do. There we go. All right. It's a little bit too big, so I'm going to scale that down. Now, I've got a scaling tool here. 
and then I can just scale it either within all three axes or one axis at a time. Or I can come over here to my properties for the coffee cup and in the scale I'll lock all three dimensions and then I can use a scrubby slider just to make it bigger or smaller. There we go. Okay, let's get the move tool and just pop this into place and then I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller still using my scrubby slider. There we go. Okay, I wanna get it reasonably how I want it, then I'm gonna use the uh, handle there just to make it a little bit bigger. There we go, good. All right, now that's working quite well. By the way, there are shortcut keys to all of the tools here. You can see V for move, and we're used to that from Photoshop and other products, of course. Uh, the select and scale is S, and the rotate tool is R, and I'll be using all three of those throughout this tutorial. Okay, let's go to the move tool with the V key then, and move that into place. I want it around about there. Now I'm already seeing that this is a pretty dull cup. I want to add some material to this. And actually that's the next icon along. So if I click on materials here, you can see there's all kinds of materials that are built in. So I'm gonna go all the way down and I'm gonna look for something maybe paperish. Um, and I know there is a paper in there somewhere. Or let's go for something like, I tell you what, let's go for grid paper. So I'm gonna put grid paper on there. And you see, I just drag and I drop it on and sure enough, it's added it to it. So if I click open the coffee cup and the cup, there we go, we've now got grid paper. Now we can't see that very clearly because the this side of the cup is actually in shadow. So let's go to our environment and we'll bring that intensity up of the light source. There we go, now we're starting to see a little bit more of what's going on. Now the shadow here is coming from this way and that's fine. We could rotate the light source if we wanted to. And we can also change the sunlight while we're here as well. Let's take down the um, intensity there and bring up the sun. And you can see that that's gonna affect the shadows, the cloudiness will dull down the shadows and the height of the sun as well. There we go. Okay, and here's the rotation, and we can rotate that around. Now, I'm actually gonna use the rotation here just to bring that a little bit around, just so it gives a little bit of shading to the side of the cup there. I think that looks good. All right, now I have a bit of a passion for the mobile apps, and I'm pleased to say that the Capture app has also been updated for CC 2018. And this includes getting textures for Dimension. So if I go over to my assets here and turn that down, and twirl open the Creative Cloud. And you can see that I've been playing with this over the last few days. And sure enough, I've got some textures that I've captured with my mobile phone. So first one I did was my desktop. So I can put the texture of my desk, this particular desk here, onto the cup there. I have a faux leather case around my iPad while I grab the texture from that. I also saw a pile of argon shells while I was recently in Morocco, so I took a picture of that. But the one I'm gonna use is a piece of paper that I found. I thought that looks nice, and so I took a picture of the paper. So it's a really nice sort of cardboardy, papery texture. Now, what about that lid? Well, let's go back to the assets here and go back to the textures here or the materials and we'll be able to go up and we can see that we've got a plastic somewhere, a white plastic. Where are we? There we go, white plastic. And I can just drag and I can drop that onto the lid and now we've got a plastic lid as well. Now very quickly, I've made a cup there with a plastic lid and a paper base. And I've also changed the light source here as well. But I might want to put a logo on something and this is new to Dimension. So I'm gonna put the tip scroll logo onto the cup. So if I go to the cup, you can see that here in actions, I get this icon here, which is place graphic as decal. I could also come to file and import and place graphic as decal there as well. But I find this is really helpful because I know exactly where I am and what layer I'm on. Now a word of caution here, make sure that you've got your material set down because if you change the material, it goes over the top of the decal. Well, it actually replaces the decal altogether. So let's do that. And I've got my logo sitting in the Creative Cloud uh, in Tip Scroll in my graphics. And so now I've got my logo somewhere. There we go, Tip Scroll on his own. Tip Scroll logo is a JPEG. There's the logo as a PNG. 
and there we go it's added into it so I can move this around I can make sure that it's where I want it to be I can even spin it around on the cup now in this case of course it's not going to make a great deal of difference because the cup is one solid material but if it was colored or we had other decal around there that might be a bit more important so I'm going to pop that there I can also change the attributes of this as well or the properties so here you can see I've got metallic I can bring that up and it looks a bit more metallic it starts to um, have that sort of metallic feel about it but also roughness so how shiny it's going to be so up here not very shiny down there incredibly shiny so now it looks like it's kind of this foil based print that's gone onto the cup there I can take down the opacity if I wanted to blend it in a little bit more but actually I want to bring this quite high up now if I rotate this around you can see that it's actually reflecting the scene as well and that's coming from the image based lighting now I've been rotating the logo there but I can rotate the cup as well so if I go on to cup and get the rotate tool you can see then I can rotate it and in fact it's all working really nicely indeed there we go now if I want to see how well I'm doing then I need a render preview and the render preview is up here in this button here now there's a couple of other bits to do with the camera position and stuff like that and we'll get to that another time let's just work on the basics for now but this is the one we want which is the render preview and you can see up here it's rendering it out for me just roughly so as I can see how my scenes coming together I can see a bigger version of that if I enlarge the window and again it's just going to do a very quick preview for me just to see how well I'm doing now this is why I made my image smaller in the first place because it speeds up this process quite considerably so only have the size that you absolutely need and for a mock-up like this then maybe you don't need a really big image so that's looking good I'm happy with that I'm going to close down the uh, render preview uh, just like project felix we can add our own 3d images as well so i've made a 3d text of tip squirrel in photoshop which i've then saved as an obj if you'd like to know how to do that then here's a link to a previous video so i'm going to go to file and i'm going to, go to import and 3d model and i'm going to go ahead and find my 3d model which i'm sure is around here somewhere there we go and i'm going to open that up now depending on how you created it in Photoshop you may not see it straight away but it is there we can see it in the right hand side here and the trick here is to look just here in the properties so position 0 0 and then Z is 86 so let's change that to 0 as well and we should when I press tab see it come into view so that's absolutely square in the middle I might need to scale this down so again I'm going to lock them all together and scale it down a little bit and then start moving it into place where I want it to be once it starts interacting with the cup I know that I'm sort of in the same place now you can see that it's slightly off the ground plane and that's because of this cue here the downward bit of the cue actually I'm quite happy to lose some of the cue so you can see that I can push that down underneath the ground and there we go we've still got a little bit and it makes perfect sense okay I'm going to scale it again and I'm probably going to make it go um, above the the ground plane again no, we're doing okay oh below the ground plane so let's take this up and then I can press R to rotate and then bring this into the 3d scene as well there we go I'm going to need to scale this so I just pressed s there to scan it there we go V to move it there we go now to sell this what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it just slightly behind the cup just to sell that it's in the same place and I might even scale it on this axis here just to give it a little bit of oomph there we go and move it there we go we're good to go all right let's change the properties of the tip squirrel let's go for something well let's go for something gold shall we so there we go there's gold I'm going to just drag that and put it on the word tip squirrel now I save this as a single object you can save it as separate letters and change those individually that's entirely up to you again that I've covered that in a previous video so I'm not going to do it again here now you can see if I rotate this let's go to tip scroll and rotate uh, if I rotate this you can see that it's again is reflecting the light and also the shadows there are working really nicely so let's pop that there and let's get the move tool pop that slightly behind there we go let's have a look at my render preview see how we're getting on there 
Okay, it's going to start it almost like a, a fresh. And there it comes, looking good. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to render this out. It's going to take a little bit of a while. So let's go to render. And we can choose whether we want to do it low, high or medium res. I'm going to choose low for this just because it's a very quick piece. Just want to get it out. Uh, I can export in the format of either PNG, PSD 16-bit or PSD 32-bit. Again, I'm going to try and save myself some time here and I'm going to go for a 16-bit PSD. Now, I need a PSD for this and I shall explain why when we go back into Photoshop. Then I can click on the export path. I can say where I want it to go. Um, let's see if we can't find that uh, folder that we used just a little while ago. Mockup, there we go. And we call it um, one. And of course, then we're going to end up with final, 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 final. But we're going to save that as number one, just to show our client or our line manager and say, how is this? And uh, let them decide if we want to do anything to it. There we go. I'm going to render that out. It's going to take, for me, this one's going to take about two, three minutes, I think, for this. So it's not a great deal of time, but I will fade out and fade back in again once this is done. Yeah, there we go. Four minutes and 29 seconds. So we're all done. It's all been rendered and it's saved as a PSD. Now, I stress that it's been saved as a PSD. It's not been saved by dimension. So if I go back to design, this has not been saved as yet. We need to do that separately. So I'm going to go to file and save as, and I'm going to pop that into mockup as a cup and text. There we go. So now I can return to that anytime I like. So if I'm told or I decide that the cup is the wrong texture or the the text is too shiny, whatever it may be, I can always come back and change that. But for now, let's say that we are done. So let's go back to Photoshop and I'm going to go to File and Open and I'm going to find that file. So on my desktop, it was in mockup and there we go, one PSD. So I'm going to open that and it's looking good. Even though it's a low res image, it's been made quite small and of course we did that very quick render it's looking pretty good and for a first pass i'm pretty happy with that now in photoshop you'll see that we've got some extra information so in here you see that it says additional layers and here's the additional layers that we've got so we've got this one here material selection so this is really helpful if i wanted just to target the cup or the lid or the text itself i can do that really really easily Next, we've got the object selection. Each object has been colors in uh, very contrasting colors, so I can go and pick those up very quickly as well. And then finally, one that I find the most helpful is the depth map information. So what I might do here is take this over to channels and I might copy the blue, let's say, to a new channel, duplicate the channel, and I can call this one depth. And now I have that information that I can use. So for example, I can now press Control or Command and click on that. And let's go back to the layers. I can turn those ones off and outside of the additional layers, I can then go to, let's say, hue saturation. And I can make the background less saturated perhaps. And now it's using that depth map to uh, mask it out. I can lighten it or I can darken it to my heart's content. In this case, it's a little bit sharp, but you get the idea that if this was a more gradual piece, we could do a lot with it. So there we go. That's Adobe Dimension in a very quick snapshot. I'm Eric Renault. Thank you very much. I'd love to see what you managed to do with Dimension. Drop a comment and wherever you see this video. Until next time, bye-bye for now.